Hey everybody, John Greenwald here with theblackvault.com. Some of you may think that you've seen this segment before, those that tuned in to my behind the scenes episodes, uh, but sadly, that was just a rendition of it. I decided to re-record it after, which is essentially one of the horrors for me, trying to uh, you know make everything perfect on this channel. Doing those behind the scenes, I mess up. And that's exactly what I did recording this segment originally. I was answering questions in between uh, some of the segments that I was doing, and I left on a question that had nothing to do with the documents that I'm about to talk to you about. I left it on screen for about half the video. Um, I just get so into talking uh, about various topics, but also I don't look at the screen that it's recording on. I use different monitors here in front of me, and I just didn't realize it. So stupid me, that is the ridiculous nature of behind the scenes, uh, but it is fun nonetheless. So if you're joining me and you're seeing this again for the first time, uh, welcome back. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about with those behind the scenes, you'll see a playlist here on the Black Vault's YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe and of course, press the thumbs up button. It really does help a lot on these videos. But I do these behind the scenes segments where I will record sometimes one, two, three, even four different stories, sometimes none. Uh, and I just spend time answering questions. Essentially, I let the audience decide and guide where all of this goes. Uh, but I do have a lot of fun with them, and we always get into fun banter, uh, a lot of which the content only stays in those behind-the-scenes shows. So make sure that you do subscribe and tune into our next one. But let's just go ahead and get right into the, the article here and these new documents, which were a lot of fun because I really didn't expect them, if I can put it that way, simply because you, you kind of get used to certain formats or certain types of documents that come out, especially when it talks about UAP. But never did I really expect internally that they'd be recognizing the Tic Tac, as most of the general public refers to it, that, that UFO sighting in 2004 uh, that involved the USS Nimitz. It's been obviously all over the news in this conversation about UAP and UFOs for the last five plus years. But I, you don't really see a whole lot of banter about that within classified, formally classified documents that are released to the general public. Now, I want to go ahead and give credit where it's due. This is a great researcher. If you don't know uh, who this is, definitely follow him on Twitter. Uh, his name is Kyle Warfel. He use, utilizes the uh, Freedom of Information Act. He reached out to me. He got one of the documents I'm about to go over uh, through one of his requests. And uh, I was surprised uh, because, number one, I had never uh, had seen it before. And the National Reconnaissance Office had talked about this prior to where they didn't really have many UAP related documents. So it surprised me, uh, number one. Uh, but number two, and we'll go over this, what Kyle received was actually not the only document that has been released under the Freedom of Information Act now. So thanks and credit to Kyle for number one, his FOIA request and and being a go getter uh, uh, researcher and investigator. Uh, but on top of that, it really motivated me to dig in to exactly what Kyle had got and realize that there was much more to the story. Now, what story is that? Well, it involves a highly classified National Reconnaissance Office uh, program called Sentient. Now, describing Sentient becomes a little bit of a challenge just simply because there's not a whole lot known about it. But there was one journalist who really dug in on it when it first surfaced in 2019. There was no connection to UAP at the time. And ironically, you've actually seen her on this channel, journalist Sarah Scholes, who writes for various publications. Uh, this particular article was published in uh, The Verge. And she wrote a big expose on sentient. And again, there's very little known about it. But here's her description of what sentient is during uh, or in, as she used it in that article, I should say. Sentient is or at least aims to be an omnivorous analysis tool capable of devouring data of all sorts, making sense of the past and present, anticipating the future, and pointing satellites towards what it determines will be the most interesting parts of that future. Now, that's a heck of a mouthful to describe a classified NRO system, but that is essentially what this thing is. So, I was incredibly intrigued 
by then what Kyle had sent over to me, which was a PowerPoint presentation about a UAP sighting that was referenced just like the Tic Tac. And they use those words, Tic Tac. Now, let me go ahead and pull up some of the documents that that I then dug in on what Kyle got and realized there were actually more that were released by the NRO. But when I say quietly, I mean quietly. I looked far and wide. The NRO put these on their website in a very kind of confusing, convoluted way of once they release records, it just goes in like this massive list of of documents. It's very cool, but you have to have a lot of patience to go through it and figure out exactly what is where and where is what, uh, because it, it does get a little bit confusing because it's just kind of a mishmash of all these different releases on all sorts of different topics. But what I realized with Kyle contacting me was that there was this sighting on 6 May 2021 of a UAP by the sentient system. Now, here's one of those documents that were released, and I'll go over two of the PowerPoint presentations and then some emails. But you can see here, and I'll go through it at, and it gives the full time in Zulu, 6 May 2021, sentient redacted image processing detected a possible airborne object 78 kilometers southeast of, and they redact that location for obvious reasons. They don't want us to know where they're essentially watching. The object was small, less than 10 meters, and did not match the visual signature of typical aircraft detections. The object did, however, vaguely resemble similar detections of airborne objects by U.S. Navy aircraft and surface vessels in the blank operating areas, unidentified aerial phenomena in parentheses. Now, why that redaction is there, I'm not really sure. We know the detections or at least the, the 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 very publicly known ones off the coast of the the east coast in virginia i believe it was uh but more famous the ones off of the coast of california so why they couldn't name those operating areas i'm a little surprised uh but it could just be the reviewer themselves not knowing that that was known to the public and just went went ahead and redacted it Going on to the bullet points, there is a rough similarity to the previously reported tic-tac shape. So interesting line there, because again, you don't see a lot of the tic-tac references in documents that have come out. There's been some leaked ones. I would argue those leaked ones were not official government documents, but that's another video. Uh, but you, don't, you generally don't see this, generally. So that was a, a very cool find to see that they are recognizing the Navy sightings the tic-tac shape, and the fact that they are unknown. The object was likely not a sensor artifact or focal plane anomaly, although more in-depth imagery analysis is warranted. Very cool line there because quite simply, a lot of people would then lean towards those skeptics and debunkers out there that this was some type of sensor anomaly, but rather this was an observation that they connected to other Navy observations, and we're ruling out sensor artifacts or focal planes. Even though they say that more in-depth analysis is warranted, maybe giving leeway to it possibly being an anomaly, sit tight because that one will likely be put to bed for you here in the next uh, few moments. There were no correlating tracks present in redacted reporting, nor was there any correlating ELINT or SIGINT in also redacted reporting, despite time coincident redacted access slash collection. Obviously a little bit difficult to figure out what systems that they're referring to, obviously classified ones they don't want to um, talk to you about. And they were saying that there were no correlating tracks. So maybe those systems didn't pick it up for whatever reason. Sentient detections did, however, detect the presence of the prob and then a bunch of redaction there in the same imagery, 25 kilometers to the west. In recent reporting, the redacted has been associated with command and control or what they what they call a C2 activities, as well as more traditional telemetry and space functions. The simultaneous presence of this high interest vessel is notable, although possibly merely coincidental. So 
still makes it very difficult here with the redactions. Quite possibly, they're referring to some type of command and control activity. Is this a surveillance drone of some kind? Is this some other type of equipment that's associated with, with whatever that high interest vessel is as referred to here? Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more there for you. Sorry, guys. Um, but there's the high interest vessel uh, quote. So was it a coincidence? Is there some kind of connection? NRO didn't know, but it was worthy of obviously uh, talking about. Confid this, this was an interesting line. Confidence is relatively low in this detection, but the potential linkage to similar phenomenon off of redacted, obviously, location, may warrant further, further investigation. Now, check this out. Here's the next couple of pages. Page denied, 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 denied. Look at all that. Now, these last two have what's called non-responsive records. So they're claiming that these two had nothing to do with the sentient UAP connection. But all of these don't have that, which means that they are. So the question mark is, what is it? Are they the photographs? Are they the images? Uh, what exactly would that be? Not really sure. But let me go to another one for you. This was another PowerPoint presentation that was also about the same UAP detection. This is a different document, Sentient Operations Highlight, Detection of Possible UAP Near Redacted 6 May 2021. So it goes through a lot of the same bullet points, but there's a little bit more here. Remember I told you that that, that sensor anomaly concern uh, may be essentially put to bed for you? Well, well, here's this. The object, meaning the UAP, whatever it was, was also detected slash visible in a second overwater image shot in the same area 15 seconds later. What does that mean? That now we have likely either multiple sensors or multiple shots, doesn't matter, but essentially ruling out a sensor anomaly of some kind. That's incredibly important in situations like these, because when you do only have, let's say, one piece of imagery, then a sensor anomaly has to to um, be taken into consideration. But when you have multiple images, but it's not in every image, now all of a sudden you're talking about likely a physical object of some kind. What it is is obviously still on the table but you can essentially rule out a sensor anomaly uh, in most cases when you have that second or multiple types of images. The last thing I'll point out about this one uh, when it comes to the wording, this detection has been shared with the UAP task force, redacted and NGA, and then a redacted, uh, quite a bit of redaction here for further analysis and coordination. This was a great line because this now shows us the type of coordination between the task force, the UAP task force, and likely now Aero, which is the newest rendition of that group. Uh, don't worry memorizing the acronyms. I'm sure it'll change in about an hour. But uh, there's coordination there. And now we have an idea of the types of systems that NRO is using to detect UAP and then the type of information that they're sharing with the task force. But then here we have the same thing that we ran in on the last one. Page after page after page denied. Just keeps going and going and going. What are these? Photographs? We're not really sure. You can see here yet again, we've got non-responsive records. Uh, so we'll take that at their word, but you still have quite a few. Here's another one that it doesn't say that. That, uh, well, clearly they don't want to tell you about what's going on here. Conclusions and way ahead was one of the final slides. Yes, there was some um, what they considered non-responsive records, but the one of the final slides with content anyway in the presentation. Conclusions and way ahead. There are a range of potential hypotheses regarding the identification of the object, none of which can be completely ruled in or out at this time. Interesting redaction here. Redacted Air Force, excuse me, redacted Air Force aircraft, e.g., redacted from tail on aspect. Now, what type of Air Force air aircraft are they referring to here that's redacted and they can't tell us? That uh, was kind of intriguing to me. I'm, I'm kind of curious what they're what they're referring to. Second item on the list, not ruled out, but also, you know, not ruled in either was a weather balloon. The third was space debris much closer to imaging vehicle. So does that mean that the imaging vehicle was in space? Likely. 
for some that's definitive. I'll I'll I'll, I'll side on 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 uh, a little bit of caution there that I won't definitively say it, but likely the imaging vehicle was in space or other. That's another one. These detections and supporting data were shared across NRO directorates with NGA and with UAP task force elements. Feedback has been extremely positive and appreciative of the contribution. Detection is illustrated of the utility of blank algorithms or redacted, I should say, when processing large image, image files tremendously reduces but does not eliminate human exploitation burden. The same sentient redacted processing strategy that resulted in this detection could be applied to redacted EO collections off of redacted in areas where multiple detections have been previously reported. This was an interesting and very easily overlooked line, in my opinion, in areas where multiple detections have been previously reported. These PowerPoint presentation slides that I've gone over are all about the same UAP event on the same day. What areas have multiple detections that have been previously reported? What does that tell you? That there's a lot more to find. I have already filed cases, as you can imagine, for those specific detections, trying to, uh, if I can, find out the location, but likely I will not. However, even though the location is redacted, hopefully we can start to see patterns of what they are seeing with this type of UAP. Are they using the Tic Tac descriptor in all of them? Well, that would be fascinating because that would be a common trait through everything. Are they all different shapes? Are they described in different ways? Who knows what I'm going to find out, if anything, on that. Uh, but it was a very interesting line that, again, I want to make sure you guys don't overlook. And you can, uh, again, just see those pages redacted. Last thing I want to go ahead and, and point out to you was the batch of emails that were uh, released that talk about sentience and the support to the UAP task force. Now, a lot of it, all classified top secret, by the way, or mo most of it, I should say, but a lot of it is top secret. So clearly they're, they're, they're talking about highly classified information here as it attributes to sentient and helping UAPTF. I won't go over every line, but this was the most important. Let me make sure I can kind of zoom here so you can see it. The to and from were redacted. You can see it was to quite a few different people, but they were all redacted. Who it was from, also redacted. Good morning. Here's the email. Good morning. NRO's sentient R&D as a UAP model to look for UAP redacted in imagery. But we need an external customer to ask for it to be turned on. And you are our primary customer. So would you mind assisting us? What model are they referring to that's within Sentient that could be, a tr that they could be utilized to find and discover and detect UAP? I don't know. When we talk about primary customer, look, my gut goes to some kind of maybe government contractor, which would sound incredibly bizarre to me, I think. But I'm not <laughs> like some things just they, they don't surprise me anymore. So I'm, I'm not really sure what it's referring to. Was this from the NRO to, let's say, the NGA, a different, um, a different agency, and that they were the ones that needed to say, hey, let's turn this model on? Who knows? So it's anybody's guess. On the last rendition of this, this video that I did, I got quite a few different guesses from people uh, in the comments. Please, if you have comments, put them in the Put them in the spaces below. I mean, I'm curious. I don't know what the right answer would be, but what is this UAP model and how really could it be used to detect UAP? I don't really know. I, 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 again, I want to stress that I'm, I'm just kind of presenting this part of the information to you, but whatever it is needed to be turned on. And that to me was, was fascinating with these documents and talking about the National Reconnaissance Office and what it can do with the sentient system. So those are the documents. That's the breakdown for you. One last note that I want to make sure that I get in here, because a lot of the skeptics and debunkers out there today, I don't need to name names uh, for those who watch various postings on Twitter and, and so on and so forth. Those that really go after these Navy sightings and these Navy encounters and and this F-18 encountering this and that and so on, but all attributing it to UAP. 
there's a very common mistake that's being had by those skeptics and uh, skeptics and debunkers, wherein they just say, you know what, this is all and I'm paraphrasing, but this is all just testimony, people's stories, somebody experiences something or maybe even snaps a quick uh, cell phone video from the cockpit, but it's one frame or just like zoom through the frame. You can't see but three or four different images in, in that video sequence. Uh, the UAP hearing is a prime example of that. I think that that was all for show when they took one of the UAP videos and they tried to tried to pause it. And it was the most awkward, like however many minutes it went on of the uh, Department of Defense uh, officials and the team, whomever was behind the scenes. And, uh, and and you could tell that that poor person was probably sweating bullets because they're trying to, you know, pause it at that one frame that the UAP was was in the frame uh, and they just couldn't do it. And it just became this big uh, embarrassment. So that, I think, has taken hold where you have essentially no information or when you do have information. Um, I think Mick West uh, talks about the low information zone that essentially there's not a whole lot there. But what you can see with these documents that I just went over is there's actually actually a lot there and that in the interest of investigating and truly researching this to dismiss these cases with the wrong assumption that it is just a pilot seeing something or a really cruddy cell phone video or photograph taken from the cockpit, um, it's wrong. It's it's going against the, the true nature of investigating these things. And even though it's frustrating for people like me and I th and I think even Mick would agree, it's frustrating not having access to this data. We have to understand we don't have access to the, to the data. We can't dismiss all of this thinking and very wrongfully. It's just testimony and some low information zone imagery. On the contrary, there are the most highly classified systems within the United States intelligence community that are seeing and detecting UAP on multiple systems in areas where sometimes areas are essentially a hotspot, as indicated by these now declassified records or declassified in part. What is that? Though That's not testimony. That's not low information zone, even though it sounds like they acknowledge they need more work. There needs to be more analysis. There's a lot more data here that we are not privy to, and we have to remember that. So if a pilot comes forward and maybe it's just their testimony, and maybe they even believe it's just their testimony, these documents prove that there is a possibility that somebody higher cleared than that pilot, somebody who's working behind the scenes in this uh, classified effort to investigate UAP, that they will have access to different systems to different platforms that captured one or two or multiple observations of that same object. So to the pilot and the skeptics and debunkers, it may be just that pilot to them. But these documents show that there are platforms in space or likely in space that are looking down and seeing what it is tagging as UAP and differentiating that between normal space debris and junk floating around. And that is fascinating when you add in the fact that there's some model that can be turned on in this system to assist in detecting UAP. Now the question is, how many have they detected and how many more will they detect as they perfect these models that they're now utilizing? Your guess is as good as mine. Put your comments below. As I said in the beginning of the video, a thumbs up is a huge help and the biggest help of all Share the word about this channel if you feel it is interesting. That said, thank you so much for listening and watching. This is John Greenwald Jr. signing off, and we will see you next time.